Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Today is Radio Teardown Day. I've got the Elecraft K2 on the workbench over there getting ready to take it apart and share it with all y'all. But really quick, I wanted to discuss with you why I do these kind of things. Not why I do the videos, but why I do the teardowns. I don't know everything there is to know about radios. But every single time I take one of these apart, I see something that sparks my interest and I want to go down the rabbit hole and figure out what it is. I'm not sure what it's going to be in this radio yet, but if you come along with me, we'll see what's in there, and maybe there will be something that sparks your interest. Maybe there's something that you know how it works, but not quite 100% sure, or maybe there's something that you've never seen before, and you want to know a little bit more about it. Or maybe there's something you don't know at all, and you want to go do some research and figure out what that thing is, and this is how you get that spark of interest. So I always encourage you, if you feel like you can put it back together, go ahead and take it apart. Let's get over there. The Elecraft K2. Bet you're wondering what's inside of it. Me too, let's get it. This is a very interesting radio. There is, despite how small this radio is, it is, I don't know, let's see, eight inches wide, eight and a half inches deep, and one, two, three, three inches tall. That looks more like more than three inches tall. Nope, three inches tall. There is a lot of power packed into this radio and we're gonna need to take a look at it. We've been inside this radio a couple of times so far trying to get the SSB module installed. I will leave a link to that video up over there. And what we didn't do was do a walkthrough of how well this thing is built and constructed and so forth. In a previous video, I keep picking the wrong size, screwdriver. In a previous video, I did go through the instruction manual, and in the instruction manual, there are more than 70 pages of instructions on how to build this thing, because this did come as a kit. I was not the one that built it, so all of this fancy, beautiful, amazing solder work inside was not mine, but we will get to take a look at it regardless. First thing is, every screw is Phillips except for this screw here and this screw over here. Those are standard screws, so I'm going to take all the rest of these off first, and then we'll get those two flatheads off. Side one done, side two done. And that should be all the screws to get the amplifier off the top of it. Is it? It is indeed. And there is enough cable slack in the amplifier that we can get it set on its side over here next to the radio. But also, it comes apart very easily by pulling off the auxiliary RF, the regular 12 volt power, the speaker wire, and then this control ribbon cable on the top. And now the amplifier is out of the way for us. We'll come back and look at the amplifier in a minute, but just wanted to enjoy the beauty of what we have working here. There are a lot of things going on in here and it's a very modular radio, as you can see. There are one, two, three, four modules installed, not including the front control panel. So what do we have? We have a receive antenna connection here that is connected to this extra board back here. And this extra board, I forget the name of it off the top of my head, but it is the 160 meter board that allows you to listen to 160 meters. And also there is some transmitting involved as well. And it screws into place so it's not gonna move around. And there is a pin header connection down below here. So you have secure knowledge that that's not going anywhere. This module right here is your noise blanker module. And you can see that it's got the NB102. So that's noise blanker is the module, 102 is the version of the firmware. This is the KSB2 module. I actually installed this module and I have a video on how to do this up here. And it's a rather long video, so brace yourselves. Information is coming. And then this module on the front here is the KAF2 and it's version 1.0. This is a real-time clock and an audio filter. But then aside from that, what all are some of the other interesting things that are going on in here? So you can see that there are a bunch of relays. These, these little black boxes that say Omron are relays and they are surrounded by a bandpass filter. So that would enable us to switch bands. So you can hear the relay click, which means you've switched into this band here. Does it say on the board which band it is? It does not. It is well labeled what the components are, but it doesn't show what the bands are. This radio was manufactured in 2002. The circuit board was manufactured in 2002. So that makes this radio 21 years old. It is now legal drinking age because it is 2023 when I'm recording this. So I just wanted to give you guys a quick look inside. On the front control panel board, there's the K2MCU. That's version 204P. Most of these chips are PIC based chips, programmable interrupt controllers, I think is what PIC stands for. And is there anything else that stands out? 
Oh, there's a couple of test points here. I had to use test point two, TP2, which connects up to this connector right here, which is the internal frequency counter. This radio's got a built-in frequency counter. There's also test point one and test point three on this board. We have a power amplifier here, and there are relays all over this board. There is a crystal filter here. There are a bunch of crystals all over the board. There's one back here, two there, two more there. And then on the SSB module, there's another crystal filter installed. And it looks like back here, there's room for yet another add-on module, and it says 40 meters next to it. So I wonder what they're adding on for that. This is the Rev B version of the board. Okay, so this is the radio itself. And then the box that I took off the top is actually an amplifier. This is a 10 watt radio. And then we bring into play a 100 watt final stage amplifier. Let's get this shield off of it. I'm kind of not really 100% sure why it's here. It's, it's open on the side, so I'm not imagining that it is an RF shield. And this is the KPA 100. Rev B as well. It was also made in 2002. All right, so there are a couple of connecting ground lugs to get you to the external case to make this part of the entire grounding system here. Oh, look at those. I see a couple of pills there. These are your final amplifiers coming out. This is another set of bandpass filters sitting over here. Power amplifier here. Uh, what do we have? We have RF in and we have power in and we have the speaker which goes in here and then comes out here and goes to the speaker. This is 1.06 of the PA. And then as you go through and build this, there's a whole bunch of little settings here. So you've got a trimmer resistor here, trimmer resistor here, another trimmer resistor there. And inside the manual, it will tell you how to tweak those things. And a lot of times there's a visual display on the little LCD screen that tells you that you're making progress or not. It's using power poles directly for power, which is absolutely fantastic. And then built into this is also the serial I.O. module. So this would replace the serial I.O. module if you had that installed on your radio without the amplifier. And then right here is an SWR bridge. Your signal comes through the connector there and then through this toroid and then continues on to be radiofied. But this toroid takes a measurement of the reflected power and forward power and gives you your SWR reading on the screen. So it knows, it's got a little bit of protection built in. It'll tell you that it is not happy if your antenna is not happy. But that's what she looks like on the inside, folks. I think this is a fantastic radio. I'm gonna take some time and some love and some care and put this thing back together. In the meantime, there's a video right there I think you'll enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.